Next up, let's talk about something called the math object. This is a relatively quick topic, definitely not long enough to merit its own section, and it kind of has to do with the stuff we've been talking about, primitives and numbers. The math object is a collection of different pieces of mathematical functionality, along with some mathematical constants. So you probably won't be using math.py very often, or math.e for Euler's number, but they are available to you. Most of what we use, or what I use the math object for, uh, are its methods. So just like strings, we have some common methods that we've talked about. The math object has methods like rounding, or uh, exponentiation, or finding absolute value. One that we'll really use a lot is actually random numbers, which we'll come back to in a moment. Let's start with a quick look at the math object. We haven't really talked about objects at all. In this case, think of the math object as just a collection of math functionality, different pieces of, or different actions that have to do with math and numbers in some way. They're collected into this object called math. And it does start with an uppercase M. If we try it out with a lowercase M, we won't get anything unless we use uppercase M. Math is just there for us to use. We have access to it. And if I type math dot, I can look at the autocomplete in my console and I'll see tons of different methods, different pieces of functionality. So something like math.py is not actually a method. It's just a value I can look at. Probably not that useful most of the time until you get to doing things with maybe geometry or some sort of game where you have a collision detection radius around your spaceship or something. But some of the more useful methods in here include things like math.floor, which expects us to pass in a number, like 3.657. And it, well, I used a comma there, but it also works. It's going to chop off the decimal point. So it doesn't round. I could have 3.9999 and a bunch of nines, and I still get three as a result. It just chops that off. But we also have math.round and math.round does round. So if I have math.round of 4.6, we get five, but 4.4 .4 is rounded down to four. We also have math.pow, math.power, where we can pass in two numbers like seven and two, and this will take seven and raise it to the second power. Or I could do seven to the seventh power and get a very large number. Other than that, Let's see, is there anything worth bringing up? We've got tons of methods around uh, trigonometry, cosine and sine, tangent, um, arcs, all this stuff. We've got some geometry, getting the hypotenuse of a triangle. We probably won't use most of those all that often, but there is one method that we will use a lot. And it's really the main reason, the motivation for me even showing you the math object. And that method is called math.random. So math.random is going to be used to generate random numbers for us, which we do pretty frequently, uh, depending on what you're actually doing in, in an application. You may not generate random numbers if you're creating a chat app, but in games or animations, for example, randomness can be important. When we call math.random, we don't pass anything in to those parentheses. What it does is it returns a random decimal between zero and one, but not including one. So if we want a random number from 1 to 10, for example, we have to transform it in a couple different ways. We have to work it into the form we want. We use this random decimal as a seed, but then we take advantage of some other methods and some other operators to get the random number into a workable form. Here's a step-by-step -step breakdown. Let's say I'm trying to get a random number from 1 to 10. I start with math.random. That gives me a random decimal, as we just saw, from zero to one, not including one. Then we multiply it by 10. So now we have a random number with a decimal going from zero all the way up to 9.9999999999. Then what we do is we floor it. We, sh we just saw math.floor, it chops off the decimal. So that gives us a random whole number, a random integer from zero to nine. And if we wanna go from one to 10, then we simply add one. And usually we do this all in one line, which looks like this. If you're brand new to JavaScript, this looks like a lot, but it's something we do pretty frequently, usually with this same pattern. We just change these values here. So if I was trying to simulate a dice or a die roll, 
from one to six, I would start with math.random. Then I would multiply it by six. So that gives me a random number with a decimal between zero and six, not including six. As you can see here, we went all the way up to 5.9. It's theoretically possible to go to 5.9999999 and so on. Then what we do after that is math.floor the whole thing. Math.floor, which chops off the decimal point. It doesn't round, it just removes that decimal. So now we end up with a number from 0 to 5. So I just got 5, and eventually I'll get 0. There we go. 0 to 5, which I could use for a dice roll, but most dice go from 1 to 6, so I could add 1 after that. And now we've got five, four, one, and eventually, hopefully, I hit six. There we go. So this can take a little bit of getting used to. If you have experience with other languages, other programming languages, some of them will have a method like random integer, and you pass in two, two numbers. I want a random integer from 50 to 100. In JavaScript, you have to do that yourself. The only built-in way of getting a random number is math.random, which always gives us a decimal from 0 to 1.